back at the Week in News with our reporters Rewind. Joining us at this week's roundtable, we have conservative columnist Brandon Bryce of the Washington Times community section. Also, freelance journalist Aaron Cantu, who's reported for the San Santiago Times in Chile, and freelance journalist Bob Meadows, who's worked at Essence and People magazine and has been at the Rewind table before. Welcome back to you and welcome to you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. There's a lot to talk about. There's always a lot to talk about, but of course, uh, what dominated the news cycles for weeks right. was first the impending <laughs> shutdown of the government, the threat of it, and then right. the actual shutdown uh, for 16 days. Uh, so I want to start with you, <laughs> Brandon, because you, you've been covering right. this. What, right. Looking back now, because they say, t right. you know, hindsight is 2020. what are some of your thoughts on this? Well, you know, it's interesting. It was a, I think it was an interesting dynamic in Washington. I think uh, you really had no winners. Uh, I think this really put more pressure uh, forget on Senator McConnell and uh, Senator Reid. This put a lot of pressure on the president, uh, who, believe it or not, his numbers didn't change. And it put a lot of pressure on Boehner, who some, even in the Tea Party, are questioning, is he fit to lead the Republican Party moving forward? And I, th I think, you know, regardless of having winners or losers, I think now it's up to 2014 and 2016. And as we saw today, now that a deal has been passed, uh, immigration is the next topic. And I think if Republicans, uh, similar to this, don't hurry up and get on this issue, they could be forfeiting 2014 and 2016. I'm just wondering, you guys, is there, is there a winner here or just not losing enough to be a winner? I mean, I think it's worth considering that uh, the measure that was put in place is lasting until February 7th, I believe. Um, and actually, it's, it's, uh, the president has been giving more, more power than he had before to um, extend the debt ceiling, which is the first time that that's ever happened. Um, I don't think there are any winners at all. I mean, I think we're going to face the same thing again. It's an unprecedented situation. And... Um, I mean, it, it's kind of a gloomy thing. You know, I'm thinking this might rally the bases on both sides. Mm -hmm. This may, and by base, I mean Tea Party on the Republican side and regular Democrats on, on the Democrat side. Because the Tea Party, this is one of their issues. They're really upset, and I think their base is really upset. You guys, were the rhino, Republicans' name <laughs> on yeah, You guys name gave only. this up. Right. This is something we wanted, and you guys caved in. Now watch how we're really going to come out in 2014. Yeah, and I suspect, and tell me what you think, uh, I suspect that particularly the far right faction of the Republican Party, the Tea Partiers particularly, right. they have not retreated. Uh, right. And I don't want to quote right. somebody, you know, it's not a retreat, <laughs> but, you know, it, it perhaps is a, is a reload. And perhaps this battle was lost, but the war is not over. Well, well you, sure. you know, it's interesting. I think if you are a Republican uh, possible candidate for 2016, now is your time to show your face. Uh, I think we've seen it now with Ted Cruz, who's really been out there about the issue. But let's be clear about what this is to all the folks out there viewing. It's not about, uh, you know, necessarily just the debt ceiling. They were repealing a program. It's about repealing mm -hmm. Obamacare. And so whether you're for it or against it, this is unprecedented, the fact that we weren't just talking about a budget, we were simply talking about a program. And I think that's going to come back to haunt us in the next couple of years. Not just even a program, Randa, but a law. Exactly. It had been debated, it yep. had been passed, signed, exactly. as well as challenged and upheld in the Supreme and Court. And I think, I think uh, most polls have shown that the majority of Americans do support Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, they, they don't agree with the insurrection of the, of the Tea Party in Congress to repeal it. And so, I mean, I think that's going to affect their electoral results in the future as well. I would actually disagree with that. It's not so much that uh, the American public uh, supports Obamacare. I think the American people don't really know what is in Obamacare. It's a 2,000-page document that very few people, even congressmen, even Democratic congressmen, but, I mean, I, John I, Conyer, I, said he, he didn't even take the time to read but the bill. It is the, the you have people against Obamacare, right. but mm -hmm. they support the Affordable Care Act. It's the same yes. exact it's thing. The same thing. <laughs> right. They don't so realize that, right. that they're different, and that's because Obamacare is you always use deris der mm -hmm. derisively. Right. So people are, are sort of ignorant of it. When Obama said, hey, you guys want to get rid of this, win an election. Well, you know what? <laughs> All those people who are against them, they actually won elections. And there may be more people who win elections than who are against this come next, next uh, November. You know, and I would say that, um, you know, President Obama might want to say a little thank you uh, to the good Lord up above that the shutdown <laughs> happened during the rollout. Uh, yeah. uh, of the exchanges, because that seemed to be an unqualified like disaster. It was messy. It was messy. You couldn't get on the website. Yeah. When you got on the website, you couldn't exactly. fill in things that you needed to fill in. Absolutely, it was, it was not the best. It was not the smoothest rollout, that's for sure. Emblematic of government bureaucracy, I think. And, right. and the spokesman said right. whoever, whoever did this should be fired. 
Well, yeah. Whoever was responsible <laughs> was, should be fired. You know, yeah. you know, it's interesting looking at kind of where we are. Um, you know, right now we're at a time when the speakership, uh, I, think, I think if there's anyone who had to make a decision, uh, not even the president, not even Senator McConnell or Senator Reid, it was Boehner who had to make the decision, you know, I like my job, do I, you know, do I want to remain speaker or is it time for me to actually do something that's going to move the country forward? Do you think Boehner comes out of this unscathed? Oh, goodness, no. He couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't control his, his people. Mm. He couldn't control them because they're not his people. They're not his people. He, when Boehner was elected to the Republican Party, the, the far right was different than the far right now. That far right now is really far right. So do you all think we're looking at an actual uh, split, in the, like an, an actual new political party as opposed to just a faction within the Republican Party. I think the Republicans would like a split. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the hard right. Right. You know, I think split. they would both like a split because people are lining up to mm -hmm. support yeah. the mainstream Republicans and right. people are lining up to support the Tea Party mm -hmm. Republicans. And I, I think they should be because they don't share the same values. I agree. Out of the Republican Party, I think one of the things that you're going to see, and I think this is one of the things uh, Boehner and even the Minority Whip uh, failed to do so, was simply explaining to those folks, those Tea Party voters, uh, what is going on. Most people don't have a clue what's going on in Washington. Mm -hmm. And then the same crowd that even, and listen, I'm not a fan of uh, the president's policies, but to call the president uh, an Islamist and for no one in Washington to step up and say, listen, this has nothing to do with uh, calling someone an Islamist or, or a socialist. This is about Washington seriously paying its own bills on, paying its bills on time, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, the the I fact mean, that that conversation didn't happen. There's a long history of, of, of playing into the racism of whites, you know, it was the, uh, the Southern strategy, I think, in the 1960s. So, I mean, this, it has, you know, a political historical yeah. precedent. Sure. Yeah, in, in, indeed. And it, what's going to be uh, interesting and maybe heartbreaking is whether or not this whole process repeats again in, in January. I think, it I think it will. You think it will? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, well then we'll have you back talk about it when it happens again, if that's right. Well, let's move on talk about something else. Of course, uh, we've been reporting this week, and I think it was the end of last week, uh, about uh, this teenage young girl in Florida who killed herself as a result of, of really horrible bu uh, bullying. The sheriff there was outraged and brought uh, charges, felony charges, against uh, two of her of the bullies. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. and, and sure. Was this an overcharged for these two young girls? Right. Yes, they're mean, but they are still girls. Who wants to go first? Uh, 12 so and 14, I'm wondering, at what age does accountability begin? These girls are not going to jail. They're not going to prison. Mm -hmm. They were arrested. At worst, they would go to juvie mm -hmm. hall, but they're not mm -hmm. going to do that. Did you see the video of the 14-year-old girl's mother beating that other kid? The reason, the reason the judge, yeah, beating another child. So obviously, you know, she learned it at home. This girl, when she got to court, didn't own up to what she did, was defiant. Her parents said she didn't do it. I think they could use a little bit of responsibility taking. I, you know, I, I agree with that, but I think, you know, forget the, the children. What about the parenting? I think one of the biggest issues that we're seeing is, you know, listen, I got bullied when I was growing up. Uh, and I think one of the things that nationally we've got to be careful of is we're not, we're getting out of teaching kids, con seriously, conflict resolution. Now, to the extent of bullying, I think, you know, we, you know if, if you have an issue on Facebook, turn it off. And so I think one of the problems that we're seeing is, you know, people can say all day that bullying has been the issue, but where's the parents to say, hey, you know, to either counter, to say, turn off the internet, or moving forward to say, you know what, teaching kids how to respect. I mean, I would assume, and it's an assumption, that these kids probably don't even respect their own parents, let alone they were allowed to even bully these two individuals. Yeah, so as, your head. Right, well, so I was actually a teacher for the last two years, and uh, first of all, as far as being able to direct the lives of uh, their children, I mean, like, in, in lower socioeconomic households, we have parents out of the house uh, working and basically having unsupervised children who are babysitted by the Internet, by Facebook. Right. I mean, there's, there's just there's so much room for things to go wrong, mm. as, as would happen. But, I mean, on, on uh, whether or not this was too harsh of a uh, sentence, I mean, I think it's just kind of emblematic, once again, of uh, America's tendency to punish, to resort to corporal means, as opposed to really sitting down and reflecting, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And, I mean, I think in large part, conflict, conflict skills, conflict resolution skills are needed. Right. Um, but also, I mean, just 
we just need to be nicer to each other. We do need you know? to be nicer to each other. But Aaron, I want to push you on a little bit because I don't think socioeconomic level has anything to do with respect and, and behavior. I mean, I grew up in a poor family sure. and I would not dare be disrespectful to, uh, to an elder or to authority sure. in my life. My mother was a working mom. I was a latchkey kid sure. and I knew how to come home and make my bed and put the chicken in the oven yeah. and, you know, my homework might be done. So I don't know that that so, has anything to do with it. Perhaps, I think what's problematic, though, is this young girl who said, yeah, I know she's dead, yeah. and I don't give up. I don't up. care. Right, right, right. And, right. And, and that alone goes back to where's the parenting? And just the second, uh, you know, second to the host, you know, in my family, we grew up that said, listen, if you don't pay attention uh, or if you don't obey, then there were severe consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody on the panel knows know, what I'm just, talking just about. Despite all that, we'll certainly, <laughs> certainly That's what you're trying when to say, we Brandon. were growing up, kids got <laughs> bullied. We probably bullied kids. Right. We may not have been the bully, but we certainly laughed when other kids exactly. were bullied. It happened. I mean, it's, bullying has always gone on. But I think bullying today is different. Bullying is different. Well, there's but, the element of but social media. But it's still media. the same thing. And plus, I mean, social like, media, right? going back to what you had said, I mean, the economy in general is a lot worse than it was 10, 20 years ago when you may have been growing up. And so you have parents who are out of the house more, parents who are working more often, wages that aren't what they would have been, you know, 20 years ago. And so, I mean, that pressure combined with the element of social media, I feel is really, it, it's, it's uh, exacerbating the All situation. All right, do you think the parents should be held culpable? Um, yes or no, I'm running out of time. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> you want me to come back I would say you? no. No, what about you? No, it's a social issue. Yeah, what do you? No, pull out the belt. <laughs> for the parents? For, for the ball. parents? For yeah, ball. with them all. <laughs> all right, Brandon Bryce, Aaron. Aaron, what's your last name? Aaron Cantu yes. and Bob Meadows. Thank you, guys. It was Thank a great you. conversation. So Please come Thanks back again. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, but we're not going anywhere because you're watching Arise America. <laughs>